Welcome at KV2 Audio and SLA, Super Live Audio Technology. My name is Stefano Trevisan, and with me is George Campera, co-founder and head of R&D at KV2. The topic of the next video is point source versus line array, George. We should start from the beginning, no? And uh, on the beginning, you know, we had a box. No, there was speaker, and then they add the horn. No, and that was the beginning. Then they need higher output, and what they did, you just add more boxes together to get higher SPL. So unfortunately, on the disk situation, now are we talking about two axes? No, then you have a huge interference between all the components there, drivers, and. There was a good solution to reduce that problem, and we came up with line array. Line array is basically the same thing, whatever was done for the speech a long time ago. It was common, every company did it, no? They had typical things, they have like eight speakers, eight inches, no? And that was used for the speech, no? But for high SPL, no? And by the reproduction, they, from two axes, they went to one axis. No, that's the line array, no. But line array still has a problem because there are too many components, no. And when we listen here, no, we can hear sound from here, no, from here, from here, from here. And when we are far enough, you will find out that actually, because that has a dispersion usually seven to 10 degrees, no, then you can find out that you hear all those points all the here, speakers. only because the, because the distance is different, no, then you hear each speaker in different time. What happens actually if you, Listen, so all, only the speak, all the speakers, also in the high frequency, cover the same area at a certain distance. Yes, exactly. And that means now, if you take one speaker no, and put a pulse in, that will be our result. No? But as we start adding speakers, no, because that pulse came later, no, and then you find out it's another one here. Another one, another box, another box, another box, another box. And then you end up, you now we listen, I feel let's say, say 10 kilohertz, which is uh, 100 microseconds. No, you hear high frequency, 100 microseconds, for the time up to two milliseconds. No, I mean, you completely lose your definition, completely, no. And another problem is, because the signal lasts longer, no, to create, to get the feedback, you need a time to develop the feedback. No? And in this case, no, it's more sen sensitive to feedback. No? If you have a point source, advantage of the point source, it stops immediately. No? It's way more resistive to feedback. Typical example was, for example, we had a concert, and there was a guy who walked, actually a singer, in front of the VHD2, like one, one and a half meter from the box. Everybody was scared what was gonna happen. No feedback, no. That's just the because advantage. the signal just stops. Stops immediately. Immediately. No, and that is guaranteed by, number one is it's a single point, and second thing is good control of the speakers, no, drivers. That means they stop immediately. To stop the speaker, no, in point source, that's what we're doing. And I'm gonna clean up this thing now, we don't need it. Mm -hmm. It's obvious, no. And uh, stop the speaker, the big problem is, and the speaker, it's inductance, no. And it's a similar thing, like uh, we put the hand here, put the spring here, and we put the mass. 
That spring here represents an inductance. As we move with the hand, the mass doesn't follow the movement. No. When we reduce the inductance or eliminate the inductance, now there's direct connection, and now the mass will control. No. And what we did, no. That becomes we have a, speaker. a resistance. It's not an. In a it's just resistance. a resistance. Yes. Yeah. And now. No, a typical um, result is a typical speaker has an impedance response like that. Impedance response of uh, our speaker. It's like this. No inductance. Because there is no inductance, there is no distortion. Simple. Because the, the distortion, mainly a third harmonic distortion, now refer, referred to the modulation of the inductance. If there is no inductance, there is no distortion. Simple as that. So having a point source in the end and uh, using all the advantages, you need to have the proper electronics too, just to yes. be able to reproduce yes. the information. No, because the distortion of that speaker is really, no, it's very, very low. We measure 0.3% mid-frequencies at 1 kilohertz. No. In the same time, what we need, we need to uh, true piston motion compression driver. Yeah. Uh -huh. You were saying that with the vertical, with the major change from horizontal and vertical aligning of single speakers, the achievement of the vertical line array that has been done also in the past for churches and for speech, um, uh, resolved that problem of the horizontal, uh, horizontal interference. Is that true? Do we not have any it's, horizontal... It's not totally. Yeah. No, because you still have one problem. We have a, a vertical and we have a horizontal, but under that angle, it causes a real problem. No, and you can tell if you're gonna listen to the system as you're walking across. No, the sound is changing. If it will be true, line array, as they say, no. It will happen, but it does happen. Because ideal line array works at low frequencies, yeah. not above. Yeah, you can, yeah. everybody knows that feeling with pink noise and moving around yeah. in an area where a line array is working. You hear the difference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, I think the advantage, uh, you know, uh, you talked about the SPL. So how do we get higher SPL with a uh, with, with, uh, point source speaker? What we, we, what we did actually, you make the, you sum few drivers together. That mean you're getting actually the horn, which has a high output, no? And has a three drivers behind, no? And because, no, as uh, theory says, and as the measurement just prove, you know, in line array, 10 speakers, you know, it's equal to one speaker in point source. What causes this, this loss of energy or and this loss of, of SPL? That, and that part cost of a cancellation on high frequency. That means the line array doesn't sum at high frequencies. Yep. No. It's because there are still small delays in yes. between, so it interferes. No. And how does also temperature uh, affect and, uh, a line That's array? another major problem. Nobody published that, but really, no. And in the 90s, I uh, <coughs> heard the system that was uh, VDOS, and sounds was pretty good, no, before people show up. When they were setting up the system, when people show up, the high end disappear. No, and disappear because air above audience no, start moving up. No, and as it's moving up, it start actually changing the distances and perfectly no, cancel the high frequencies. Yeah, it changes no. the direction yeah. of the... Changing not the just the direction, but the length, the length. actually, no, the path. Mm -hmm. And therefore, no, it cancel. There's almost zero, and everybody <coughs> basically went through this thing. They they can hear under the wind condition, the sound just disappeared completely. Totally disappeared. Some part of it. 
No. Can you draw a, a diagram that shows the loss of, uh, of SPL uh, in line arrays? Like if we have... Because a line array sums... If you have a one box with straight line, we add another box, and what we will end up will be some uh, com filter. No. As you start ending more and more, no, you will find that uh, it's smoother, that bad. The cancellation of high frequency is huge. And typically is 10 dB, 10 dB to 10 kilohertz. No. And therefore, at 10 kilohertz, one driver has the same output as 10 drivers I in line array. Now, and now we are now we are back to the R system, which we're currently developing. No, it's a VHD five, and here we have actually small horn for the high frequency, a large horn for the mid frequencies, and large area for low and mid. No. And here, advantage is this, because the dispersion is uh, controlled very well, and it's same on every frequencies, therefore, we have a constant power. No? And that's why we call it constant power point source, because really, that represents our mid frequencies, that represents high frequency, that represents the rest. That means this is 45 up to 400 hertz, no, that part, it's 2K up to 20K. And this part here is 400 Hertz up to 2K. No. And uh, this way, we basically produce constant power on every frequency. Advantage of that, you have the same sound everywhere. Yeah, every band. No. And because there is only one point when the signal comes from, have nothing to cancel with. Therefore, you can get the symbols across 100 meters without any problems. No. You just have to <coughs> count with the losses through the air. And we find out here, at 50 meters, you need about 6 dB boost. Now, in 100 meters, it's about 12 dB both to get a flat response. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, what about, what can you say about the definition over distance of a system like this one? Yeah, it's a definition basically because we have a, a relatively uh, huge loss in, uh, in, uh, in the air now. Then, uh, and we have actually in the catalog, we have a nice picture which really represent the problems now. And, as you're losing the, to, when you're going through the air, you're losing the high frequencies, and we can say we're losing the definition. We can have, let's say that is our threshold of the sound recognition. No? And you can see if you have a lower quality to begin with, no? I'll apply the same curve, that distance is different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That means a higher quality you have on the beginning, further you're going to get high quality sound. Yes. Uh, and this is the main difference between multiple point source point and only point, point source. Okay. Thank you, George. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you very much and see you soon.